Yes, now that I've been uh, designated a shock jock, I was thinking, what could I, what could I come up with in this hour to top the previous hour? You know, the, generally a shock jock is a guy. In fact, there's a, a fellow in Tampa, Florida. He has uh, been uh, reprimanded by his company because he was interfering with uh, audience research. Let's just put it that way. And he goes by the name of Bubba the Love Sponge. Now, there's a huge difference between political talk radio and what Bubba the Love Sponge does. You may have also heard about a couple of ne'er-do-wells who were working in New York City, and their names were Opie and Anthony, and I went to college with one of those guys, just for full disclosure, uh, and knew him quite well. And he was not at all like that type of character. He he was on radio, and in his personal life, he was a much more calm, sedate fellow, because well, he's doing a radio show, right? And then they ran afoul of some people in New York because it was said that they were making some comments that were deemed as racist. In other words, uh, they raised a couple of questions that may have been obvious to a large part of the public, but it was called stereotyping, and therefore they were off. Well, they're temporarily off the air till someone else comes along and gives them a million dollars a year to do that. Or Howard Stern is a shock jock, and he talks about women's anatomy. Does anyone, can, can you tell me if you've heard me talk about women's anatomy on the air? Do I make dirty jokes? Do I call myself a love sponge? Of course not. But I do try and talk about things that I think are logical to most people who are listening in this community. Eight minutes after nine o'clock, Bill Colley with you on Top Story 53. You're listening to News Radio 1310 KLIX and News 1310.com. And I don't see any logic that is being used in, in, in this liberal argument that we have to be uh, overrun right now by Syrian and potentially Muslim refugees. You know, and I don't mind if they're... I had a friend I worked with at a TV station back in the late 1990s. He was uh, from Syria uh, originally, but, you know, he made great baklava. I'd bring it in around Christmas time and serve it to everyone because there are Christians in Syria and not many. I mean, most of them have been pretty well killed off by ISIS. But we've been talking about the security concerns. The governor referenced the security concerns on the air the other day. Do you think that the governor is a racist? Is that what they're trying to imply? Or is he a shock governor because he brought it up? What are you trying to imply here? And why is it that we're supposed to sacrifice our security to make ourselves feel better? And and, and say that we're do-gooders. Is that what this is all about? Because... That's not a logical defense of what you're talking about. And and to sit here and say that your neighbor should take the same risks that you're taking, I'm sorry. But your neighbor may not feel that way. You may not own a gun, but your neighbor may own one. Same idea, because your neighbor is concerned about someone busting down the back door at 2 a.m. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. And it's legal. Ten minutes now after nine o'clock. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. The, the thing is, you've got some people in other media who really have no idea what it is we do. And yet they think that they do. And so therefore they make their comments about that. And I feel for those people because they're working with a limited budget and they're they're working under the constraints of a corporate entity, so are we. But you know what? They don't. They, they 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 heard it from somebody who heard it from somebody who had a friend who worked in the business, and so therefore they they think that they know what's actually going on and what it is we do every day, and that 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 there's no thought process behind this and no preparation. Have you ever heard me make a citation from a trusted news source on the air? I don't know the Wall Street Journal today or the New York Times or the Washington Post. Yes, you have. Do you think I haven't done my research? Of course I have. And the fact of the matter is, it's not just coming in here and shouting and saying, ah, let's go get these people. There might actually be a little brain power behind it. This is Ben Carson speaking at a rally in Virginia. Now, Ben Carson, a week ago yesterday, was being interviewed on Meet the Press. That's a program over at NBC that nobody watches. And he was asked if he would support a Muslim president. And he said, no, I would not support a Muslim for president. In other words, I wouldn't vote for one. He didn't say, no, we're going to prevent them and we'll, we'll, we'll make sure they never get that office. He was asked his personal opinion. He gave it. I won't support a liberal. Does that make me a bad guy? No. I think they're bad people. Well, they may think they're good people. Put it this way. Let me rephrase that. I think they're bad for the country. So, no, I would not support one. That does not mean that I want to bar liberals from serving in public office, albeit if it happened, I wouldn't necessarily be depressed. 
This is Ben Carson speaking, and, and let me just remind you, after making those comments, he was denounced wrongly by even some of his fellow Republicans. The lefties over at the Washington Post, Pravda on the Potomac, and uh, over at the uh, Gay Standard, I mean the New York Times, they were all saying that he needed to withdraw, and he needed to say he was sorry, and he didn't do it. And guess what? He's had a tremendous surge in the polls. We don't raise it one penny for three or four years, and the budget will be balanced, just like that. That's how easy it is to actually balance the budget. But that's only step one. There are thousands of federal employees that retire every year. Don't replace them. We welcome people from all parts of the earth. But we welcome them, as Teddy Roosevelt said over a hundred years ago, we welcome them with open arms, but only if they're willing to assimilate into American culture. Amen. Amen. You got it? This is the United States. It's not Damascus. You come here, you're going to learn to live as an American. He has jumped in the poll numbers, and in one recent poll he was just a point behind, might be a national one, behind Donald Trump among Republicans. Ben Carson's approval rating is the best of any Republican running right now, which is about three-quarters of all Republicans, but nearly half, and I'll say 47% if you'd like me to be exact, but when they say, you know, plus minus with a margin error, uh, could be 50%, could be 51 of all voters approve of Ben Carson. And his negative is just, among all voters, it's just 27%. Hello, do you folks in media who are trying to tell us that you're smarter than the rest of us? That we're all a bunch of dumb, dumb dummies? Does that irritate you? Because apparently no one's following your advice. In fact, a great many Democrats are obviously looking at Ben Carson and saying, uh, dang straight, he's, he's, that guy's spot on. Why is it that you are so out of touch with your fellow Americans? I know why you think that we're so out of touch. It's because we're dumb, dumb dummies. Because we didn't go to some J school somewhere. And we're not hanging out. Just because you interview somebody who's really bright doesn't make you intelligent by osmosis. You understand that? It's not like a virus. Even if that person coughs, you're not catching their intelligence. 914. 54, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. While Ben Carson was getting this raucous applause at an event in Virginia, President Obama was in New York City last night attending an LGBT gala. That's G A L A. LGBT gala in New York City. Tonight we live in an America where don't ask, don't tell is something that don't exist. <laughs> Tonight, thanks to the unbending sense of justice passed down through generations of citizens who never gave up hope that we could bring this country closer to our founding ideals, that all of us are created equal, we now live in an America where our marriages are <laughs> equal as well. $18 trillion? Well, all right, it could be $100 trillion in debt. Who cares? Johnny and Jimmy can now get married. So you got Ben Carson talking about keeping America safe and secure and a way to reduce that budget uh, deficit. Uh, that overall debt, that yearly deficit and the overall debt. And then you've got Barack Obama saying, hey, I, there's a marriage of three people out here. Isn't that great? Hey, hey, I'll be in town for a couple more days. You can reach our program by giving us a telephone call, a shout at 736-0300, 736-0300. And, of course, uh, you can, you can uh, look us up online at newsradio1310.com, listen to us anywhere all over the world. And my email address Bill.colley at townsquaremedia.com. That is Bill.colley at townsquaremedia.com. And I've said it before. There are people out there who have experienced what this Islamic radicalism is all about and the dangers. And as, as I said in the last hour, 19 guys crippled this country for months, if not years, after 9 11. Two people in Boston, Massachusetts, killed and maimed, and they managed to shut down an essentially established martial law in the, one of the 10 largest metropolitan areas in this country because they bought some ball bearings and a pressure cooker. But you know what? Yeah, well, that's an acceptable loss, according to Lefty out there, right? And is it a shame that they've got the death penalty? We should put them away for the rest of their lives so they can contemplate the fact that they chopped up little girls with their ball bearings. Tonight, 
Pastor Sharon Hadian speaking in the area. Today's the 28th, right? Sure is, because I know that because Wednesday's payday. He's going to be speaking at Calvary Chapel in Buell. That's at 1004 Burley Avenue, Calvary Chapel in Buell at 7 o'clock tonight. If you want to know exactly what this... Now, this is a man who was raised in that faith, albeit we talked earlier. He had a much more secular family growing up in Iran, and then they had to flee the country when the Ayatollahs, the Mad Mullahs, took over the land. And he has worked in law enforcement as a police officer. He's been a coach. He's a convert to Christianity and now a pastor. So that's going on tonight. And you can reach our program, as I said, at 736-0300. Then he has appearances tomorrow night in the area. We'll get to that, as well as on Wednesday night in the area. Uh, That's a big event, too, taking place at Canyon Crest Dining and Event Center on Wednesday. You're next. You're on the air with Bill Colley on Top Story. Yeah, Bill, correction. Uh, The meeting tonight is at the Eastside Baptist on Eastland. Now, is this a move, uh, or is it... Is, yeah, it's not not in the Calvary Chapel. It's been that has to have been changed to the Eastside Baptist Church uh, just north of Kmart there on Eastland. Okay. So that's where he spoke before. Uh, yeah, that uh, information apparently didn't get to you, but uh, that's where he needs to be. So is this bigger? Be, this is a bigger, bigger venue then? Yeah, so... But he will be at... Over in Jerome on Tuesday night, and then at the Canyon Crest Center at seven thirty on Wednesday. So I thank you for the correction. So you're certainly welcome. Thank you. Have all you day. folks who were thinking about driving to Buell tonight and maybe stopping off for a little Italian food out there, no. <laughs> East Side Baptist. Uh, that's on Eastland uh, Drive. That's where, as, uh, as our caller pointed out, he appeared here earlier in the summer. They have a lot of parking. And they have a huge venue. So there's an opportunity. That's a Southern Baptist church. These are good people. They're willing to hear the truth. They're not willing to close their ears to it. And maybe Lefty ought to go out too and listen for a little while because, hey, a lot of our people came out last week and heard Lefty's presentation. Lefty actually had a fellow there from the State Department who said that there are currently no Syrian refugees in South Carolina, even though they're planning to see them. You know what Lefty uh, didn't include? There are already some of them there. So that, that fellow's credibility is already shot, I think, in this situation as far as that happens to go. But again, uh, so we have a correction. Uh, that'll be taking, uh, taking place tonight at the Southern Baptist Church on uh, Eastland Drive in uh, Twin Falls. Much bigger venue, which tells you they're expecting a, another large crowd for that event. And our caller pointed out he's in Jerome tomorrow at Magic Valley Evangelical Church. A Magic Valley Evangelical Free Church. I should get that in there. That's important to the people who actually put these churches, uh, founded these churches in many cases. 7 o'clock tonight and 7 o'clock tomorrow night at Magic Valley Evangelical in Jerome. And uh, on Wednesday, 7.30, slightly later start, 7.30 at Canyon Crest Dining and Event Center. More on this subject coming up in a few minutes. One of those people who was uh, suggesting last week that Ben Carson suddenly drop out of the race for president was Hillary Clinton. Um, Carson hasn't busted any laws, though, and on the other hand, Hillary Clinton may have, we're being judicious here, may have busted a number of uh, various regulations. In fact, it appears that her actions at the State Department with her, her personal server for email for government business, much of it classified or top secret, that it harmed a system that was put in place government-wide, a quality control system to ensure safety. There's a big story about that at Daily Caller today, and it, for Daily Caller, it's a lengthy, lengthy expose. Mrs. Clinton making the rounds of morning television yesterday, still trying to pull a mea culpa. Even 70% of Democrats now say she's not trustworthy. It was already there. It had been there for years. It is the system that my husband's uh, personal office used when he got out of the White House. And so it was sitting there in the basement. It was not any trouble at all. It is like a drip, drip, drip. And that's why I said there's only so much that I can control. Um, But what I have tried to do in explaining this is to provide more transparency and more information than anybody that I'm aware of who's ever served in the government. And I'm happy to do that because I want these questions to be answered. Uh, I can't predict to you what the Republicans will come up with, what kind of, you know, charges or claims they might make. I have no control over that. 
I think I have done uh, all that I can to you know, take responsibility, to be as transparent as possible mm -hmm. uh, in turning over 55,000 pages, in turning over my server, and to you know, testify on October 22nd, which I've been asking to do uh, before the Congress. Oh, yeah. Meet Trey Gowdy. <laughs> Meanwhile, over at the local newspaper, they're all saying, gee, Willikers, I wish I could vote for her today. Because she, she, she'd ensure that we could be overrun with all sorts of people from other parts of the world. Did you hear, hear her say, you know, it was in the basement. My husband had used it. So I figured, what the hell? As long as it's down there, you know, sitting next to the garden hoe, I figured, well, what the heck? We'll use that server instead. Oh, we'll save the government a little trouble here. I'll just go downstairs and I'll plug into it. And then I'll throw some clothes in the dryer while I'm at it, too. You think she does that on her own, or does somebody else do her laundry? 925, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. 53. Uh, how, how do you lefties out there even justify getting behind someone like that? Especially, uh, how about you feminist? Because of what her husband did to other women and how she helped cover it up, and she, she assaulted them a second time by in many cases helping put together the attacks against these women. How, how do you sleep at night when you support someone like that? Here is someone who may have jeopardized national security. I mean, we, we may have people out there who don't like us, who've got nuclear-tipped weapons pointed at us, and she may have given them some information. I'm not saying she did it intentionally, but, but how, do you, how can you get behind someone like that? Does it bother you that much that, that there may be other candidates out there from another political persuasion who still love their country and believe we should keep it safe and believe that we should be able to pay our bills and not go bankrupt? Does it bother you that much that someone like that could be president? That you have to still go with this bald-faced liar, Hillary Clinton? 926, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Hillary Clinton, of course, not the only uh, not the only whiner uh, from the uh, the Washington establishment. We're still dealing with. You would figure that these are people from not just another generation; they're from a couple of generations ago, and yet here we are. We're still after all these years. It just seems to me it's amazing. A lot of these political names just never go away. There are five hundred and thirty five people serving between the House and Senate. Meanwhile, you've got a few thousand people serving in state legislatures across the country. You, you cannot tell me that we can't find better candidates, that we still have to go with these old, worn-out people. It's like listening to music. Uh, you know, we're still listening to a lot of bands that we grew up on, but my parents, by the time I was a, a, a teenager, they weren't listening to Teresa Brewer any longer, if you get my drift. So we're in this terrible situation in this country where we're constantly, it seems, we're just repeating everything from the past over and over and over again. Well, at least we can still hear it. If you're listening today, that's a good sign. And speaking of hearing, we had as a guest two weeks ago on the program, Dr. Christine Pickup. She's a doctor of audiology from Mount Harrison Audiology. That's located in Rupert. And they're at 1218 9th Street, unit number two. First of all, we'd recommend you check out the website, mountharrisonaudiology.com. She'll do a free screening for you too as well. Telephone number 208-312-0957. Hearing loss and dementia are linked. Hearing loss becomes a great burden on the brain as you have to expend more time and energy to decipher what others are saying to you. Treating hearing loss reduces the strain and makes hearing more natural. Keep your brain healthy by taking care of your hearing. Speaking of uh, dementia, there are, there are clues that you may have an issue in your life. And this is a serious note, but it's got a funny ending if, if that's possible. But sometimes, and I was told one time, if you walk to the refrigerator and you open the door and then don't recall what you came for, that could be a clue as to what you're going to look forward to when you grow older. So on Saturday, I had a pizza that I got all decorated to put into the oven, and I turned the oven switch on to uh, preheat, you know, 400 degrees. Well, I turned it up to 400, got the pizza all ready, opened the door to the oven, and I didn't get a blast of heat. Because what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to turn on that other switch that says bake. So you got to have both on in order to bake the pizza. So after going through all of this hard work and thinking, aha, now it's ready to cook for the next, you know, 15 minutes, open the door and sure enough, so I popped the pizza back into the freezer and it just struck me. Uh, it's another one of those moments, those senior moments that we start getting in life 
And, you know, they're funny at times, but you really don't want to ignore them. You want someone to take a look at those types of issues periodically. 930, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. It's 54. Hey, we've got more coming up. John Boehner called Ted Cruz a jackass. We keep hearing that the new brand of conservatives that were not very nice people. You know, you got a guy who's resigning from his job because nobody can stand him. He's a falling down drunk. And, and, and yet he turns around and calls Ted Cruz a jackass. And media applauds him. And yet tomorrow they'll be saying that we're not very civil in politics. Hmm. Again, somebody's got blinders on.